Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about diabetic ketoacidosis. This is an introduction and overview. It is important to know that diabetic ketoacidosis is a medical emergency, especially in type 1 diabetic patients. But it is known that it can also occur in type 2 diabetes. As the name suggests, it has to do with acidity. So there's increase in acidity in the blood, essentially. The signs and symptoms of diabetic ketoacidosis is nausea, vomiting, polyuria, polydipsia, weight loss, hyperventilation, known as Kuzmal's breathing. Now, diabetic ketoacidosis doesn't occur out of the blue. There's usually some triggers. And these triggers, these etiologies, it can be remembered as the five eyes. The five eyes are infection, intoxication, inappropriate withdrawal of insulin, infarction, and intercurrent illness. And these five triggers, they cause what we know as diabetic ketoacidosis. So let's go into the pathophysiology briefly. If you want to know more about the functions of insulin, watch um, a video I have on the fed state, which is under biochemistry. Anyways, the pancreas normally produces insulin. However, in diabetes type 1, there is an autoimmune attack on the B cells, which normally produce insulin. And therefore, insulin is not being produced anymore. So we have a decrease in insulin. Insulin is an important hormone, and because we have a decrease in insulin, this causes some problems. First, it means that, there, it means that gluconeogenesis is not inhibited, and so we get gluconeogenesis. We get more production of glucose. We also get increased glycogenolysis, and we get a decrease in glycolysis, all of which will result in more glucose in the blood. So we get hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia results in glucose being peed out. So we get glucosuria, glucose draws water, so we get polyuria, and we also get dehydration as a result. Because we lose a lot of water and we are dehydrated, we get polydipsia, we, we get thirsty. It's also important to note that the decrease in insulin, the absence of insulin, means that fat breakdown occurs. It's a very important concept to understand. Fat breakdown occurs, especially if the body is not receiving enough energy. So in, um, in periods of infection or feeling ill, the body will start breaking down the fat because glucose is not present and because glucose is not being taken up. Fats are, get broken down from adipose tissue um, to form free fatty acids, which then go to the liver and undergo ketogenesis to make more ketone bodies. It does this because the body needs some form of energy, some form of supply, because glucose is not working or because glucose is not present. With so much ketones being made, we get ketonemia, we get high ketones in the blood. And then subsequently, this means that we get ketonuria, we are peeing out ketones. And it's also important to know that ketones are acidic. Ketones are acids, and so they reduce the pH in the blood, but also they will reduce the pH in urine. This is the main pathophys we see in DKA. So if a person presents with the signs and symptoms we spoke of, a thorough history and examination needs to be done, and appropriate management needs to be performed, which includes checking the airways, checking breathing, and circulation. In circulation, IV access is important for a few reasons. First, to get bloods for investigation. It's also important here to get a base serum potassium level. After getting the bloods for investigation, administering IV fluids, saline, and also administration of insulin slowly is very important. 
administration of insulin is important because we want the cells in the body to take up the, the glucose that is in the blood. While this is going on, investigations have to be performed. So ABG, which is arterial blood gas, is very important to measure the pH in the blood. And this needs to be done regularly. Bloods, as we mentioned, full blood count, EUCs for infections and also electrolyte abnormalities and dehydration. Urine analysis is important to check and monitor if there's glucose, ketones, and infections. ECG is performed to check for arrhythmias in case of potassium, hyperkalemia, or hypokalemia. So again, monitoring pH by doing regular arterial blood gas is important. And also it is important to monitor serum potassium levels. The reason it is important to measure serum potassium levels is insulin is being administered because insulin will actually cause hypokalemia. If you get hypokalemia, you can actually trigger an arrhythmia. Sometimes calcium gluconate can be administered to protect the heart from um, these hypokalemia-induced arrhythmias. Anyways, monitoring is continuous. Check pH and check bloods. After a while, you can switch the fluids to 0.5% saline and 5% dextrose. This is done when blood glucose goes down at least about 14 millimoles per liter, let's just say. Again, for diabetic ketoacidosis, monitoring is essential. Monitor bloods, EUCs, perform ABGs to check for pH, and monitor urine output and also the changes in urine pH, glucose, and ketones.